Hey there, let's go over how CPU registers work in WinDebug. So, within WinDebug, there often is a lot of information on the screen and it is rather confusing. One of the more confusing aspects of WinDebug are the registers. Let me demystify some of the confusion and explain what registers actually are and how to use them in WinDebug. In my previous videos, I did use registers without explaining too much about how they work. So let's deep dive into registers in this video. Okay, let me switch over to an instance of WinDebug that I already have running. What we have on screen is a view of an application in which I have loaded and hit a breakpoint. The breakpoint is waiting on the init dialog function over here. That's not really important, I just need to hit a breakpoint to show registers. To view registers, there is more than one way. There is a dedicated view over here, registers, in which all the registers are dumped. This view is pretty complex and I often don't use this view. Rather, what I do is I just use the command R, which also shows registers, but only shows the last few registers over here. These registers are the most important registers. But what exactly are registers? Within the computer, there is the central processing unit, the CPU, connected via bus lines to the random access memory, RAM. The CPU has some storage within itself that is used for computations. A register is just a small location of memory within itself that stores a value. The size of a register can vary from 16 bits all the way to 64 bits. Now, registers can be larger or smaller, but the most general registers are usually 16 to 64 bits. This is important, as the naming convention for registers uses a prefix to represent the size of the register. The accumulator register, which I will cover shortly, is named AX. The name AX means it's 16 bits. When the register is addressed as EAX, the size will be double at 32 bits. Similarly, Addressing as RAX doubles again to 64 bits. The sizes are not actually differing registers. RAX, EAX and AX are the same register. It's just the reading and writing size that is denoted by the prefix. It's very possible to write a value as RAX and read it back as EAX only obtaining a partial value. Okay, so with that explanation, if we view back WinDebug, we see that all the registers is prefixed with an R, like RAX, RBX, RCX. This means that this instance of WinDebug is connected to a 64-bit application. If we switch to a 32-bit instance of WinDebug, we can see that the registers have an E as the prefix. This means that the application is 32 bits. So that's about the size. But what exactly do the registers do? Well, there's quite a lot of registers to explain. So for this video, I'm going to just explain two of the most important registers, which is the EAX, which is the accumulator, and the EIP, which is the instruction pointer. The first is the EAX or the 32-bit accumulator. This is an easy one. The accumulator is the result of computations. When a value is added to another in assembler, the code runs like postfix notation. I'm gonna skip the math lecture on how it works, but the abbreviated code looks like this. The accumulator is the register that stores the result. So the code in C above is translated into assembler as follows with the result going into the accumulator. Return value of functions go into the accumulator as well. The other register of interest is the EIP or the instruction pointer. The instruction pointer is the exact location in which the code is executing. If we view the disassembly by going to view and viewing disassembly, we can see the exact position in which the breakpoint is currently waiting. Let's view the registers as well we can find EIP in the register list. 
Now, if I were to step the code in assembler mode, we will be able to see that each time we step, the EIP will change. So this is the EIP over here. I can step, there we are, the code is changing. I can step, I can step, and the address keeps changing. The reason that the breakpoint is still at the top and the assembler keeps moving is because each line of C over here is many lines of assembler. That, that's just how it works. If I switch to source mode and I press F10, it's going to make a big jump through the code. And it's pretty hard to see where in assembler it's jumping. So usually if you were to go to assembly mode and step, you can see very clearly how EIP is changing with each step. EIP is pretty easy to understand. Some of the other registers of interest like the EBP, which is the base pointer and the ESP, which is the stack pointer, it's also quite important, but it's a bit more complicated to explain. So I'll make a dedicated video on EBP and ESP, as well as the various counters that are available in the registers. Anyway, debugging in WinDebug is often confusing enough without a deep understanding of the CPU. However, some of the techniques to do release mode debugging requires a deep understanding of the CPU function calls and especially how the registers work. I'm gonna make more videos on release mode debugging. So I figured I'll make a few videos on how the CPU actually works to make it easier to understand those future videos. I hope that this quick explanation on registers will help in decoding some of the mystery of WinDebug. Gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.